everybody, this is Miss Bufford, and in this video, we're going to talk about electron configurations. So your learning goals for this video are to be able to relate electron configuration to an element's position on the periodic table, be able to explain the pattern and meaning of electron configurations, be able to identify an element from the electron configuration, and give the electron configuration if given the name of the element, and be able to write the long and short or noble gas notation configurations for electrons. So what is an electron configuration? This is a series of numbers and letters that describe the locations of all of the electrons in an atom. This includes the energy level, the orbital, and the number of electrons in that orbital for every single electron. Let's look at an electron configuration for a small atom to see what each number and letter in these conf in configurations mean. So we take a look over here. Um, these large numbers in white represent the energy level, right? The letters, the purple letters, represent the orbital that electrons are found in within those energy levels. And the exponents represent the number of electrons found within that orbital. All right, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how to write these electron configurations for any element on the periodic table and how to identify which elements electron configuration we're looking at um, based on what we see in the configuration. And so the first thing I wanted to mention was that um, the periodic table that you're used to seeing has two parts. It's got this um, table up here at the top you know, where it's got the red, the blue, and the yellow here, and then this little island of elements down here at the bottom. But in reality, um, if we could print out a periodic table on a longer piece of paper, then we would be able to uh, display the periodic table like this because we'd have enough space to print out big enough boxes we could see all the information. But if we tried to print out the periodic table like this on a normal piece of paper, it would be too small for us to be able to see any of the information in the boxes. So that's why um, we have it done the other way normally. So I just wanted you to be aware that when we're looking at the periodic table in this unit, uh, for a lot of these slides, this is how the periodic table is going to be shown to you. All right. So have you ever wondered why the periodic table has the shape that it has? Um, the reason for this is all about the electrons. So when the periodic table was made and organized um, over a long period of time, elements with similar chemical reactivity were put into columns or groups on the periodic table. And we now know that the reason those elements have similar chemical reactivity is because they have similar um, valence electron structures. All right, So their valence electrons are the same on the outside. And um, the organization, just how it ended up being organized, is the shape of the periodic table that we have today. All right, so in this video, when we talk about electron configurations, we are only going to be writing electron configurations for neutral atoms. We're not going to worry about writing electron configurations for ions or anything like that. And that means that the atoms that we're going to be dealing with have equal numbers of protons and electrons. And so if you remember, take a look at this periodic table. I have all of the elements listed with just the atomic numbers. All right, and remember that's the number of protons that those elements have in their nucleus. And the periodic table is ordered in order of increasing atomic numbers. So each element on the periodic table, down a row on the periodic table, has one more proton than the last. And if that's true for protons, and these are neutral atoms, it's also true for the number of electrons that these atoms have. So each element down a row on a periodic table will have one more electron than the last. And so these atomic numbers can also, for, for right now, represent the number of electrons that that element would have. Um, it's also important, um, and I'm going to use an example to show you this uh, because I think it's the easiest way to do it, to understand that when we're dealing with electron configurations, Every box that comes before an elements box on the periodic table is going to represent the location of an electron around the outside of that atom. And our example here is carbon. And carbon is element um, number six. It's got atomic number number six. And um, that means that it's got six electrons. 
and its electrons are locations are described by all of the boxes on the periodic table that come before box number six. So uh, carbon's first two electrons are going to be in this first energy level. So these numbers over here um, represent energy levels. All right, so all of the elements in row one have one energy level. And so the first two electrons around carbon are in that first energy level, all right? And if you'll also notice that these boxes on this periodic table are colored according to orbitals. So that means since they're in red boxes, they're going to be inside an S orbital, all right? And we know that the first energy level can only contain an S orbital because it can only have up to two electrons. All right, energy level two now. So... Carbon's third and fourth electrons are also going to be located in an s orbital, but they're going to be in an s orbital in the second energy level. All right, and then the last two electrons, electrons five and six, are going to be still in the second energy level, but now they're going to be starting to fill the p orbital in the second energy level. And that last electron that carbon has is going to fall on its spot on the periodic table. All right. So uh, now let's go ahead and just look at some examples of writing electron configurations using um, a similar table. So we're going to do oxygen first, and we need to determine how many um, electrons oxygen has. And so here's oxygen down here on the periodic table. I went ahead and put a red box around it. And we know that oxygen is atomic number eight. So it's going to have... If it's a neutral atom of oxygen, it's going to have eight electrons. So let's go ahead and describe their locations. All right. So the first two electrons in, are up here in energy level one. And so I'm going to write energy level one in an S orbital. And there's going to be two electrons in there because that's going to completely fill that, that energy level. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to write is a 2S2. So I'm in second energy level now. And I have my third and fourth electrons are filling up that second level energy level S orbital. So my second energy level, S orbital, and two electrons in there. And I'm, no, I'm not done. I've only described the locations of the first four electrons, but I have four more to describe. And so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm in, still in the second energy level. But now I've got one, two, three, four electrons in this P orbital in the second energy level. So I'm going to write two for second energy level, P for the orbital, and four electrons. And notice that I'm ending on oxygen spot on the periodic table. And if you take a look at this electron configuration diagram that I've, that I've produced for you guys, you'll see that the last thing I write in my con electron configuration is the last thing that shows up in oxygen's box, which is 2P4. And that's how we can identify which element this is. Uh, by looking at the last thing in the configuration for a neutral atom. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple more examples. And the next one we're going to do is chlorine. And so how many electrons does an, um, oops, that should say chlorine atom have. And so chlorine is right here on the periodic table. I've put a red box around it. And we can see that that is atomic number 17. And if it's a neutral chlorine atom, it's going to have 17 electrons. All right. So I need to describe the locations of these 17 electrons. Again, I'm going to start with electrons number one and two up here in the first energy level. So I'm going to write 1s2. Then um, I'm all done. I, I went all the way across here. I've done the first energy level. Now I have to go to the second energy level. And the first um, orbital to fill up in the second energy level is going to be electrons 3 and 4. So that's going to be 2s2, second energy level, s orbital, two electrons to fill it up. Now I'm going to go all the way across. And this second energy level also has a p orbital. So I need to describe the next six electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so I'm going to do that by writing 2 for the second energy level, p for the orbital, and that's going to be completely full with six electrons. Because remember, p orbitals, they can only hold up to six electrons. All right, now I have nothing else left in the second energy level to be able to describe. So I'm going down to the third energy level. 
And in the third energy level, my 11th and 12th electrons are going to be in an S orbital. So third energy level, S orbital, that's going to be completely filled up. And I'm going to have five more electrons to describe the locations for. And so I'm going to go all the way across to the rest of the third energy level over here. One, two, three, four, five. And that fifth electron is where chlorine is located on the periodic table. And so I'm going to write 3P5 because there's only five electrons in that P orbital. All right, third energy level, P orbital, five electrons. So you're basically just reading these from left to right, one row at a time, just like you would read lines in a book. All right, and you're just writing down the orbitals that are filled up. And then when you get to that last orbital, you're just telling me how many electrons are in the last orbital. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. And actually, before I move on, I just wanna go ahead and make that point again. If we're looking at the electron configuration table that I've put in your OneNote notebooks, um, then you'll see that the last um, or chlorine spot in the periodic table has a 3P5 in it. And that's what we ended our electron configuration with. All right, so now let's go ahead and do arsenic. And sorry, again, this should say arsenic, not oxygen. I copied the slides. Um, all right, so arsenic is located right here on the periodic table. I put a red box around it. And we can see that that is atomic number 33. So again, if it's a neutral atom of arsenic, it's also going to have 33 electrons. So let's go ahead and describe the locations of those electrons again. I'm going to start up here with energy level one. The first two electrons are going to be in my 1s orbital. There's two of them. It's going to be completely full. So now I'm going down to the second energy level. My next two electrons are in the um, 2s orbital. So I'm going to, those are going to be completely full as well. Now I'm going to go all the way across second energy level. And I have a completely full 2p orbital. So 2p6. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now my, I'm done with my second energy level. Now I have to go down and do the third energy level. So third energy level, I have 3s2. That's my 11th and 12th electrons right here. Then I'm gonna go all the way across. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm in the third energy level. I've got an, a p orbital here and there's six electrons in there. So 3p6. Now I'm done with my third energy level for now, and I'm gonna come down here to the fourth energy level. And I need to go ahead and describe the, the locations of those first two electrons right there, number 19 and 20. All right, and now, so 4s2. Then I'm gonna go all the way across, and you'll notice this time I'm hitting this blue box. And in this blue box, if you'll notice, ooh, I didn't put it in here we're dropping down an energy level. So when this is the D block, so D orbitals or D block electrons, they drop down one energy level. When we start to fill um, these electron configurations. And so what's happening here is that they are, um, this is going back and, and kind of tucking in, you know, the d orbital electrons underneath the 4s um, electrons. So um, just keep that in mind for the d electrons, they're going to drop down one energy level. And then when you get down to um, atoms that have f orbitals, those are going to drop down two energy levels. So this is going to start at the fourth energy level. This is going to start at the third. All right, just that's something really important to keep in mind. So that's going to be 3d10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because I'm third energy level. D orbital, there's 10 electrons in there. It's completely full. And then I'm going back up to fourth energy level for the p orbital, and I only have one, two, three electrons in there. So three, oops, that should be four. Sorry. 4p3. Four All right. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is called orbital notation, and this is just um, a way to describe the locations of electrons um, that makes it easy to visualize the relative energies of each orbital 
and it's easier to see some of the principles that we need to be familiar with when we're writing electron configurations. Um, so this first principle is off bounds principle, and it states that electrons that are orbiting one or more atoms will fill the lowest energy level before filling higher energy levels. Um, so this means that they're going to occupy those energy levels that are closest to the nucleus before filling um, ones that are farther. Hund's rule states that if two or more orbitals of equal energy are available, electrons are going to occupy them singly before filling them up in pairs. And in a minute, you'll see um, how some of these orbitals, so for the p orbital, for example, has three different um, orbitals available in the second energy level. And so electrons are going to occupy those singly before they start doubling up in there. And you can kind of think of this as like strangers on a bus. If you're going on a trip and you're riding a bus and you don't know anybody, everybody's strangers to everyone else, nobody really wants to sit together, so they all take their own seats before they start having to double up and sit next to a stranger. Um, and then the last principle is the Pauli exclusion principle. And this just states that if two electrons reside in the same orbital, they're going to have opposite spins. And we're just showing this using the up arrows and the down arrows if electrons are occupying um, a single orbital. Um, but that's really all you have to know about the Pauli exclusion principle for this class. All right, we're not going to go into any more detail on that. Um, but I did, before we go on, I do want to make a connection between the orbital notation diagram up here in the top corner and the um, periodic table version that we were using a minute ago to write electron configurations. And then we're going to do some of those same examples using the orbital notation diagram so that you guys can compare and see, you know, how to use both um, resources. So uh, the first energy level on, a, on that diagram we just used, um, remember that is only has an s orbital in it, so it can only hold two electrons. And those two electrons are going to fill this 1s spot right here. All right. Then on our second energy level, once the 1s orbital is full, that entire energy level is full, and then we're going to have to go up and start filling up the second energy level. And so then we're going to fill in the second energy level. The 2s orbital is going to fill up completely first. And then our 2, 2p orbital is going to start to fill up. And remember, it's filling up according to Hund's rule, so they fill up one at a time before they start doubling up. And then um, in the third energy level, we'll start to fill up. And then the fourth energy level will start to fill up. And you'll notice now we're starting to fill that 3d orbital. Okay, so this is the 3d, so it's third energy level d orbital, even though it's listed up here um, close to this 4s. All right, and then the 4p orbital will fill up. Now energy level 5, again those d orbitals are going to fill up right after the s orbital. Then our 5p orbital, now energy level 6. And now we're starting to fill the f orbital. Notice that the f orbital when it begins to fill is two energy levels below the energy level that we're supposed to be filling right now. So just keep that in mind. With the d orbitals, it's, it goes down one energy level. And with the f orbitals, when they start to fill, they, they go down two energy levels. So these f um, electrons are being added to the fourth energy level. All right. So they're filling up, according to Hun's rule, one at a time in each box until it's full. And then they start to double up. Now we're at 6p, and once that's full, now 7th energy level will start to fill up. Six d and then 7p. All right, so let's go ahead and do some examples of writing electron configurations using orbital notation. So here's our orbital notation diagram, and we're going to do oxygen again. I know we did oxygen with the other um, table, but I just figured we'd do the same elements so you guys can see them and compare the two methods. So oxygen has eight um, electrons, and so we need to describe the locations of all eight electrons, and I'm going to start down here with the lowest energy level orbital right here. It's the 1s orbital, 
and I'm going to put my two electrons in there. I still have six more electrons I need to describe the locations for. So there's my next two, the 2s2. And there we go. So 2p4. So here's the electron configuration for oxygen. It should be exactly the same as the one that we did with the other diagram. Um, and then this is just showing again how those electrons are filling up those orbitals. So let's go ahead and do chlorine really quick. We said before that chlorine has 17 electrons, and so we're going to use this diagram to describe the locations of all 17 electrons. So off-bow principle, we're starting down here with the lowest energy level, and we're going to work our way up. So there's the first two electrons in the 1s orbital. The second two, uh, two electrons in the 2s orbital. And then we're going to completely fill this 2p orbital with six electrons. So now we've described the locations of 10 electrons. We have seven more electrons to uh, fill in here. So the next highest energy level is going to be the 3s orbital. And then the next high after that is going to be the 3p orbital. And we'll have five electrons in there. All right, so here is the electron configuration for chlorine. And then arsenic is the last example here. Um, and again, that has 33 electrons that we need to describe the locations for. So our first two electrons, according to the off-bow principle, are going to fill in that lowest energy level. So two, uh, 1s2 then 2s2, then 2p6, and then 3s2, and then 3p6, and then 4s2. Now we're filling the third energy level d orbital. All right, and now 3p3. All right, so there's the electron configuration for arsenic. So what I would like you to do is you can either use your periodic table or the electron configuration diagram that I have in your OneNote notebooks um, or the orbital notation diagram and um, write the electron configurations for these three elements up here and then identify the last two electron configurations. Tell me which elements those are. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a try and we'll come back in just a minute and go over the answers. All right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to pause the video and you gave this a try. Um, the electron configuration for nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Sulfur is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Copper is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. And then the identity of this first electron configuration right here is antimony. And I will give you a hint here. You really only have to look for this spot on the periodic table. So if you can find the fifth energy level in the p orbital, the third box over, that will tell you which element this is. All right. And the last one here is mercury. So again, if you look at your periodic table, you find the fifth energy level uh, for the d orbital. Remember, it's different for the d orbital. And uh, you count 10 spaces over, that will be uh, the box for Mercury. All right, so now let's talk about one more thing, and this is called noble gas notation. So as you can see, um, some electron configurations can get really long. Um, there is a way, though, that you can write these electron configurations in a more efficient uh, format. And this is called noble gas notation. And um, this is cool because it allows you to condense all of the inner electrons, but it still shows you the electrons that are on the outer um, energy level, which are the most important electrons. So noble gas, uh, the noble gas symbols are used to represent all of those inner electrons um, that an atom has. And then we just write out those valence electrons. And we're going to talk about valence electrons in, in more detail in the next video. So if you're not sure what those are, just know that those are the electrons in the outer shell of an atom. All right, so let's take a look at some examples and some steps on how to write these. 
So uh, some steps for writing electron configurations using noble gas notation. Step one is you want to look at the periodic table and find the noble gas that comes directly before that element on the periodic table. Um, you, step two is you want to write the noble gas symbol in square brackets. And then step three is you just want to write the remaining part of the element's electron configuration that is not described by the noble gas. And so our example here is copper. And I want to take a look at the periodic table so I can determine which um, noble gas comes directly before that. So here's my periodic table. Um, remember that group A, or 8A, I'm sorry, is the group where all the noble gases are. So these are all of our noble gases. All right, and copper is right here. So I need the noble gas that comes right before copper. So if I go all the way down this row like this, then I know that argon is my noble gas because this ends with 18, and so or sorry, 19, and so 18 is going to be my noble gas here. Um, another trick you can just do is you know if it's on, it's going to be on the row um, that comes before that element. You just go down to the end of that row. And again, we would get argon. So argon is the noble gas that comes right before carbon or copper. And so here's my example. Um, we just found out that argon is the noble gas that comes right before copper. And so here's the regular electron configuration for copper. And what I've done here is I've just highlighted where argon's electron configuration is. Because remember, with when we write these electron configurations, we're just basically building up um, all of these electrons around an atom in a certain way, and they're going to be organized the same way in all these atoms for the most part. So um, here's the electron configuration for argon. And then what I want to do is I want to take a look at the periodic table. So here's argon. Now I'm down here. Um, I need to finish the rest of this electron configuration. So I'm in the fourth energy level. Here's my s orbital. So I've got four s and I've got two electrons here. So I'm going to write that 4s2, and then the rest of the electrons are right here in this d orbital. So remember, this goes down in energy level, so it's going to be energy level 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's the ninth spot, and so 3d9. So the electron configuration here for, or the noble gas configuration here, would be argon in square brackets, and then I just write out the rest of that electron configuration on the row below that. All right. So what I would like you guys to do is go ahead and write the noble gas electron configurations for each of these two elements, antimony and mercury. You don't have to write out the original one if you don't want to. If you can just find that um, noble gas and then write out the end of that um, configuration that just shows the outer electrons. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you were able to figure out the noble gas configurations for these. Um, antimony is right here. So the correct answer would be Krypton 5s2 4d10 5p3. And for mercury, the correct answer would be xenon 6s2, 4f14, and 5d10. If you have any questions or if you're not sure, you know, what you missed on any of these example problems in this video, um, just go ahead and write yourself a little note and we can talk about it in class. Before I close out this video though, I just wanted to mention a couple things. So in this class, with this video, we're learning very basic electron configuration, meaning that we're just learning to write the electron configurations to show the order in which electrons typically fill um, orbitals around an atom. And this is occurring by increasing energy levels um, or energy within each orbital as well. Uh, but sometimes electron configurations are written differently. And so here are some things that you might see um, that you should be aware of if you're looking online at other resources uh, to learn more about electron configuration. Sometimes electron configurations are written in a way that groups all of the orbitals in an energy level together instead of increasing energy um, amounts of energy. So this is the way that we're learning it in here where we're, we're writing everything by increasing amounts um, of energy. So where these electrons are being filled in order. Um, but sometimes people will swap 
things around so that they can have all of the, like for the example for zinc right here, we have all of the three energy level three orbitals grouped together. Um, I'm, we're going to be doing it this way where we're showing the order that they're filling in. All right. Um, sometimes there are other exceptions to the order in which orbitals are filled. And so these are exceptions to the off-bow principle. And this has to do with the stability of an atom's electron arrangement. Um, so some atoms prefer to have half full um, d orbitals rather than a full s orbital and a less than half full d orbital. So copper and chromium are some exceptions here where you'd see an exception to the off-bow principle. And so if you're looking at electron configurations for some of these elements online, they might look a little different than um, how I told you they should look uh, based on what we talked about in this video. So just be aware of that. Um, and just know that we're not going to worry about the exceptions in my class. And so your electron configurations should be written um, how I just showed you to write them. Thank you for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.